Hi folks, so in this video I'm going to go through the code that I used for creating the button class. It's not actually a lot of code, the class itself is about 50 lines and it contains all the functionality of the button within it including when the mouse is over the button and when the button's being clicked. So I'll show a demo of it again. Uh, that's my button's being generated and when you mouse over the color changes, you click and the color changes again. And the action at the moment is just being output to the console, but within the game loop you would have it coded so each button click actually does something. So, for example, these up and down buttons, I've added them in with this counter just to demonstrate. So when I click up and down, it increases and decreases. And you'll notice that holding it doesn't do anything, which is a deliberate f uh, feature, because otherwise there wouldn't be any fine control over this. If you just held the up button, this number would just shoot up. So this allows you individual control over the values. So I'll go straight into the code. This start up here is just kind of standard Pygame stuff, so I'm not going to go through all that in detail. It's just important libraries and creating the game screen. I divide in a font and a few colors. I'll come back to these global variables. I do use them in the buttons. So then I've created my button class and I start off by defining different colors. So this is the standard button color when it's not being interacted with. Then I've got a color for when it's being hovered over by the mouse. Then one for when it's clicked. And finally, I've got a color for the text and a width and a height for each button. Next, I have my init function where I only feed in an X, a Y coordinate and the text that I want on the button. And then the draw button is the main function within this class. So these are, uh, well, that's that variable clicked from before. And I define an action, which is, I start off as false, and this is the output of this function. So that's what I return at the very end. This next line here, it takes the mouse position. So this is using the pygame mouse.getPause function. Uh, and that gives me the X and the Y coordinates, which I store in the pause variable. This I can then use to determine whether the mouse is hovering over uh, each of the buttons. The next thing is I create uh, a rectangle for the button and I use the, again, I use the pygame rect function for this. So that takes in the start X and Y coordinates and the width and the height. So once that's set up, I can go into the actual logic for the button itself. So the first thing that I want to check is whether or not the mouse is, or the mouse cursor is over the button. And this is where that button rec that I created comes in handy. So I can just simply use the collide point function. And what this does is it checks whether the mouse cursor is within the boundaries of the button rectangle. So this means that I don't have to manually code in uh, if checks for say, is the mouse position beyond the start point, but less than the end point of the button. This just does it for me. So if that's true, it means that the mouse is currently over the button. Then I want to look for my clicks. And that's where the get pressed function from Pygame comes in. So I look for a click. This is normally going to return a bunch of zeros and they correlate to the position or rather the, the mouse button itself. So zero is the left mouse button. So what I'm saying here is that if the left mouse button has been clicked, so if that's given me a one, then I set my clicked trigger to true. And then notice I don't actually process any function here, any commands. I just set this trigger and then I update the color of the rectangle to the clicked color, but I don't actually feed anything out. I then come into my next line, which looks for the opposite. So it's saying if the mouse is not clicked right now, but the click trigger is true. So essentially this means it's not clicked right now, but it was clicked on the previous iteration because that's how the click was set to true. So that's telling me that the mouse button has been clicked and then it's been released. So that's the point where I want to actually add in the function. So I set click to false, so that resets my trigger and then I give my action the value of true. So this is the action that gets returned at the end. And this essentially is the code that's saying that it's being clicked and released. And lastly, I have an else, which is saying that if there are no clicks, but the mouse is over the button, well, I want to show it in the hover color. So it's just the same function 
for drawing the rectangle, but I just feed the hover color to it instead. And then finally, if none of those things are happening, so the mouse button's not over the, uh, over the button and it's not clicked, uh, then I just want to draw that button normally. So then again, it's just the same Pygame draw rect function onto the screen, and now I give it the button color. So that's the free color where it's not been interacted with. So that's my uh, three rectangles uh, in the three different con con uh, conditions. I've got the one where it's clicked, the one where it's just been hovered over, and the one where there's no interaction with it at all. Uh, this last bit of code here is essentially just, it doesn't add functionality, it, it's just to make the buttons look a bit better. So I add shading to it. If you notice on these buttons, I've got white lines along the top and the left borders and then black against the bottom and the right. It just uh, adds a bit of depth to it, makes it more of a 3D button. So I thought it just looks nice. So that's all that this, these four lines of code do. And then lastly, I take the text that's been fed into the uh, into this class. So that text is converted into an image because that's how Pygame displays text. Once it's converted to an image using font.render function, I get the length of that text, or rather by this point, the text is an image. So I get the length of that image in pixels. And I use that to work out where I'm going to set to, to position it within the button to make sure it's always central. So I use screen.blit which is the function within Pygame for showing uh, images onto the screen. I take in the text image that I've created, and then I give it an X and a Y, and that draws it within the button. Uh, and then finally, I return the action, uh, the action variable. So that's essentially the class. I can then create as many buttons as I want. So these are just instances of that class. All I need to feed into them is my X position, the Y position, and then the label that I want on the button. So that creates four instances of these buttons. Uh, and in here, it's again, it's just a standard Pygame loop. So I've got a, a running condition and then a while loop. I fill in the screen background with a background color. And within here is where I look for my button actions. So the, this is the instance, and then this is the function that's within that class. So I always look for the instance uh, and then the draw button function because that essentially it will draw it, but it will contain all the logic in it as well. So if this is returning a true value, meaning that action has been set to true by a mouse click, then within that I add in the functionality for the button. But even without that functionality, it's always going to be processing the code that's within it. So it's always going to be drawing the button and it's going to be showing whether it's hovered over or not. So these little functionalities that I've added in here, that was just for demonstration and for debugging really. So all it does is for each button click, it prints out what's been clicked. And for the ones where I had up and down, I added a counter and that was the, the red counter that you can see here. So every time there's a click, that counter uh, increases or decreases. So within the game loop is where you add your actual interpretation of what's happening and what these buttons do. And finally, I just had the counter shown on the screen. Again, that was for just for debugging. So that's quite a quick run through of what the code does. Uh, I didn't want to get bogged down into the details of each individual function of Pygame. Uh, there's other tutorials out there that are better for that. I just wanted to explain what, how the button class works. I have added the colors within the class itself, but they could be either modified within here if you want to change the color scheme, or alternatively, it would be possible to add them into the class itself, into the init function. So these would be variables or arguments that, that are taken by the class when you create the instance. So potentially the colors could go in here instead, and that would mean that you could set different colors for your different buttons. Uh, that's an option. I decided to just keep them all standard for this, just to reduce the number of arguments that I'm going to have to feed into my button class. I figured I would just reuse the same button colors throughout each game that I'm making. So that's pretty much it. I'll put the code for this in the description, uh, and I hope this is useful and might save a bit of time in creating buttons in future games. So thanks for watching.